How's it going, wonderful people? It's wonderful to have you here for the time I do. It's really great for you to stop by, and I hope you enjoy your stay. I'm not cooking today. I'm actually at my favorite spot in my city, so I hope that's forgivable. Today, we're going to be reading some r slash pro revenge stories, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Mean Girl Betrays My Friend, and in return, I ruin her life. Last year, I started hanging out with this really fun group of girls that I met through my master's program. I was in a really bad place, and these girls embraced me right away. There were about five of us in this girl group, and I loved them all. Well, I loved all except one. Let's call her Egotistical Bitch, or Eb. Eb was mean. Eb was catty. She was the wildest girl in the group. She always wanted a party. She always showed up late at the university and she was just so fake. Eb and I had the same focus in our master's program, so I unfortunately had to spend a lot of time with her. That quality time together made Eb feel very comfortable around me, to the point where she thought she could say anything to me. And that time she talked so much shit about every other girl we hung out with, I'm talking really mean stuff. She also continued to belittle and talk down to me. She questioned my intelligence all the time and always tried to undermine me and make me feel less about myself. Now, I put up with Eb because I loved the other girls and they just could not see how toxic she was. Eb also rented a room from one of the girls in my group, let's call her Dolly. Dolly is the sweetest girl I've ever met. I have only known her for a year and she is already like a sister to me. She is the typically southern belle type, all bubbly personality and strong accent, but she would literally give you everything she had if you asked for it. Eb regularly treated Dolly terribly, late on rent, barring, ruining her clothes, never cleaning, but Dolly didn't say anything because she knew Eb came from a bad at home life and wanted her to feel safe in their apartment. Seriously, Dolly is an angel. In my program, all the MA students are also teaching assistants, or research assistants. So one day, after submitting all of our students' midterm grades, our group decided to go out and have a celebratory drink. Dolly, however, did not accompany us because she was going over to her boyfriend's house. The rest of us headed to the Irish pub right off campus. We all had either classes ourselves or were teaching the next day, so most of us don't drink that much. My university has a really strict attendance policy, even for MA students, so we were pretty careful. Except for Eb. She gets drunk, like face on sideways, rip roaring drunk. This was not unusual. Eb was known for getting super drunk all the time, but she'd really been struggling with managing her TAing in her own classes. So she went for it extra hard. Two hours after we got there, the rest of us had had one, maybe two drinks and eaten to help us stay sober. Eb, on the other hand, could barely stand. Unfortunately, I lived in the same complex as Eb, and since Dolly wasn't there, I had to take her drunk ass home. On the way home, Eb starts talking about Dolly. This twat sickle was so drunk that she had no filter. Eb started saying that Dolly is a dumb inbred southern bimbo, and the only reason that our faculty advisor liked Dolly so much was that she had big tits. She also let it slip that she had been sexting Dolly's boyfriend and intended on sleeping with him. Apparently they had been sending nudes for some time, and he'd even been sexting Eb while Dolly was over at his house. That night. After telling me all of this, she promptly fell asleep in my passenger seat. At this point I am in shock, but I know I can't let this stand. You can fuck with me, but don't fuck with my friends. My first reaction was to kick Eb out of my car, but I thought better of it. We live in a pretty big city known for human trafficking crime, and I may hate the girl, but I don't want her dead or physically hurt. Instead, I dropped her off at her apartment, tucked her into bed, and grabbed her phone. Using your thumb to unlock the phone, I first found all the messages between Eb and Dolly's boyfriend. I took screenshots and sent them to myself, deleting the screenshots messages to myself after. Then I turned off Eb's alarm for the next day. As I mentioned, my university is very strict about the attention of their students and I knew for a fact that Eb already had at least two warnings regarding missed late classes. The next day, Eb didn't show up to the lab she taught as a TA. She called in midway through the day and said that she had the flu, but unfortunately for her, an anonymous file was sent to our faculty advisor showing a video of her doing Irish car bombs the night before. The file also came up with a short note explaining that the last couple of times Eb had called in, she'd been hungover lying as well. The same day, I showed Dolly the messages between Eb and Dolly's now ex-boyfriend. Dolly freaked out. I had never seen someone so mild-mannered lose their shit before, but Dolly snapped. She told me that Eb was two months late on rent and this was the last straw. Dolly went home that night and told Eb she had a week to get the hell out of her apartment and pay Dolly what she owed. When Eb said I was a liar and making shit up to come between them, Dolly showed Eb the messages. According to Dolly, the bitch went silent. What more could she say? Within the next two weeks, Eb was crashing on some friend's couch, and she was placed on an academic suspension. Apparently her grades sucked as much as her person 
personality. That combined with her lying attendance problem caused the university to pull her funding. I still have to see her, but she knows better than to talk to me or anyone in our group. We pretty much cut her all out of our lives. Sometimes I feel like I went too far, but then I remember how smug her drunk ass looked telling me she was going to steal my best friend's boyfriend. And I feel much better. X cheated on me and spread slander about me. I ruined his chances of dating anyone ever again. The year is 2015 and I had been dating a really great guy for a year and a half. I was 20 at the time, he was 23 doing pretty well for himself house, car, and well-paying job. Things took a bad turn. My mother had been diagnosed with breast cancer, so I ended up spending a lot more time with my parents, checking in on them regularly and running any errands they hadn't had a chance to do. Boyfriend did not like this at all. He complained how I barely spent time with him. I visited my parents every weekend and occasionally in the week, and that I should be spending more time at home helping him out. I was disgusted. I told him I needed some time to myself, and we didn't speak for a month. Foolishly, I went running back to him and we reconciled and everything was good for another month. After a month of him being very understanding, I received a text from him while driving back from my parents. It just said, I don't want to be with you anymore. I pulled over and cried for an hour. When I finally got back, there was a note left for me and all my clothes and belongings had been packed into plastic bags. The note went into detail about how I just wasn't what he wanted out of a relationship. I took the bags, threw them into my car, and had to live with a friend. Let's call her Jess, it's important later. Until I could get my own place. I hadn't spoken to him in months and he managed to get my address through a mutual friend. He showed up in my apartment to return a laptop I had lent him while we were dating. I didn't need it and I didn't want it, but he walked off before I could hand it back. I loaded it up and checked if it was in good condition to sell. It wasn't, but it made up for that with all the accounts he did not log himself out of. Facebook, bank accounts, emails, etc. You name it, and he was still logged into it. I got a bit curious and had a look through his Facebook messages from near the end of our relationship. I discovered that he had been sleeping with Jess, the best friend I believed I could trust. During the month we didn't talk, they got quite close and that stuck around after we got back together. There were quite a few pictures sent back and forth. He'd even sent pictures I had sent him and pointed out all my flaws. I now know what he meant by, I wasn't what he was looking for. He made up tons of lies about me being abusive and threatening to stab him, he even claimed that I stole from him. I screenshot messages between them and the other girls he had been talking to and kept them stored away in a special folder. I checked his bank periodically and recorded whenever he paid out to cam girls. He was one of those guys. After months, he kept building up. By this time, him and Jess were happily living together while he was talking to three other girls on the side. I printed off all the chats and bank transactions. I went to his house and handed it all over to Jess and then sent the digital evidence to all the girls he had on the side. I left it for a week and then checked his Facebook. Jess and all the other girls had made posts about his sleazy ways and tactics. Him. Oh boy, he was pissed. He tried to play victim, blamed it on mental illness, saying he wasn't in the right state of mind. Any excuse he could think of to use, but to no avail. The damage had already been done, and it felt amazing. The worst human I've ever met, featuring entitled parent. So this happened yesterday. I'm not working at the moment, but I've been trying to keep myself busy by offering to help people in my family and friends circles, giving them lifts, helping them move, etc, etc. All in all, I consider myself a pretty generous person. Yesterday, my younger brother finally managed to get a few days off work, and he was going up the coast with some friends for a nice relaxing getaway for one of their birthdays. He asked me weeks before if I could give him a lift, as he had chef school that day and wouldn't be able to get a lift to the house with his friends as planned. I said, sure, no problems. The day comes around, I pick him up early as he finished quick and we get on our way. The drive wasn't bad, it took about 1.5 hours, and we just chatted and listened to music all the way there. It was a nice drive. At this point, it was around 4.30 p.m. by the time I dropped him off, and turned around to go home. I got probably halfway home and I see someone parked up by the side of the road, waving me down, so I decided to pull over as a few cars ahead had already driven past without stopping. They dodged a bullet. Enter entitled parent and her lovely kid. Can I help you? Me looking confused and she waved me down. Uh, I thought maybe you needed some help. Is everything okay? Um, no. We ran out of petrol. Oh, okay, that's a pretty easy fix. The next town I knew had a service station as I passed it on the way there, and it was only another five kilometers up the road. I can drive you into town and get the petrol and bring you back here. Okay. She says simply, her son picking up some of the gravel by the roadside and throwing it into traffic. 60 mile per hour highway. Hey, don't do that, champ, it's dangerous. She had gone to grab her purse, but reeled out of it as I say this. Don't you speak to my son like that, she snapped angrily. Sorry. I get into my car, followed quickly by the obnoxious pair, highly regretting my life choices by this point. Now feeling I can't redouble on myself given how difficult she has been at me helping her. The entitled parent sits down and immediately scoffs, looking at her feet. Why is your car so dirty? Uh, oh, sorry, I used to put my work boots down there, so it got kinda dirty over time. You could clean it up, you know. 
I laugh nervously and just nod, pulling away and wanting this to be over as fast as possible. I left my phone in the center console and she grabs it up. Can I call someone? My phone ran out of charge, that's why we're stuck out there. Uh, oh yeah, go ahead. I have unlimited calls, so I really didn't care. Either she thinks the person on the other line can't hear her, or she's trying to contact them without the use of the phone because she is shouting. Meanwhile, her son suddenly leaps up between the two front seats, looking at the front window. I quickly slow down a bit in shock. Whoa, put your seatbelt on, dude. The mother just glances at him and pushes him back into the seat, and I have to tell him to put his seatbelt on again before he actually does. I'm freaking seething by this point. I could barely see the town ahead, and she thankfully only had a short conversation conversation and put my phone back. We pull up to the pump without issue, but she sits there for like 10 seconds, giving me this quick sideways glance with her arms folded, and I don't even have to ask if this bitch wants me to get the gas for her. I know she does. And then I think. I didn't know if it was going to work, but I wanted to try, and here I am. I get out of the car and I grab a 5 liter jerry can they had for sale holding it up for her approval and she nods. I fill it up and walk to the passenger side door and open it. What? Oh, I just want to know if you and your son wanted to pick out an ice cream. I know it's a hot day today. She looked shocked for a moment and for the first time she smiled. The kid practically leapt out of the car and much to my happiness, so did she and followed him in there. I walk in, put the jerry can onto the counter as he quickly comes out with his ice cream. Oh, uh, one sec, I left my phone in the car. It has my debit card in it. I smile as soon as my back is turned to them, getting into the car and casually driving off relishing in the sight of her running out to the service station screaming who knows what profanities. All in all, it only ended up costing me about 20 minutes of my time, but the feeling I got as I drove away was priceless. I wonder how long it took them to get back to their car. I got home fine, and a solid gold story in tow to tell my family. Best drive ever. Hey, what's going on, you lovely people? Hope you enjoyed the video. I've never done an r slash pro revenge, so hopefully it went well, and if you did enjoy it, then feel free to like and even subscribe. It was great having you here today, and I hope to see you very soon, friends. Take care, and bye. It's a lemon.